Good morning, welcome back to another weekly vlog. You know when you kind of think you're going to start the week, you know, quite well and you're going to just get what you need to get done and then your body's just like, no, we're not doing that this week. <laughs> That's how today's going so far. So, um, yeah, got up reasonably early and everything, got ready. Um, I had to go for a blood test and it wasn't at my like local surgery, it was one of the partner surgeries which is a little bit further away so my mum drove me over there um they're just blood tests that my gp's kind of running just to see if there's anything going on because i haven't had a blood test for quite a while and my health has just been a bit all over the place so she thought she'd just do some bloods to just check everything i can't imagine that anything will come up but um it's good to just kind of keep an eye on stuff so yeah she took me over there and um i went in and I hadn't, I'd barely sat down and my name came up on the board. So I went in, into the room and it was um, a, I don't know whether she was a nurse or a healthcare assistant. Um, I don't think I've seen her before, but she was very nice. And she also sat down and she said, right, you're here for a blood test. I said, yes. She said, oh, are you, are you okay with blood tests? And I was like, well, I'm all right with them, but my veins aren't. <laughs> um, I said, you know, if if it was a case of just sitting here and doing one blood test and you know you got the blood and it was all fine I'd be absolutely fine but it's not and so I said can I lie down because they're kind of hard to get blood out of and it just I start feeling a bit funny after a while so just, that was okay um and I lay down and everything and um she'd already kind of had a look to see where she wanted to look and we were going to try my right arm so she put the tourniquet around did the like put the butterfly in I think she used the butterfly um and I, I was sort of lying there for a bit and she was like you okay I'm like yeah um and I, I don't know I always know when that like nothing's happening because you can just hear them what well, you can't hear them changing the bottles and um you can, I don't know I can just I can just tell um so after a while she was like she said I'm just gonna do like some manipulation to see if I can get the needle to go back into the vein because basically what happens is my veins look like reasonably good and then as soon as you put the needle in they disappear um and so she's like moving it around she keeps asking if I'm all right I'm like yeah yeah I'm fine um and then after a while she's just like no she's like I'm gonna have to take it out nothing's nothing's happening I was like okay fine that's fine um so she said right I'm gonna try again I'm gonna go a little bit further up on the arm um like like literally a tiny bit further up and see if we can get anything again because she said the vein looks good um it just didn't work that time so i was like okay <laughs> so she did the same thing again and no still still didn't get anything um and so she took that one out and then she said oh have you ever had blood taken from your hands and i was like <laughs> yeah one or two times um <laughs> maybe more than that um so she said okay do you mind if i have a look at your hands so i was like no that's fine carry on you know we often have to do this um and so she had a look at my right hand and i assumed that she would kind of take it from like you know somewhere around here but i could feel her like looking in between my fingers and I was lying there and I was thinking, what is she going to do? Um, and then she said she said to me, right, she said, I'm going to warn you now. She said, this is going to hurt um, a lot more than the arm. So I was like, okay, yeah, you know, I've had them in my hand before. I know I know that it's a bit more painful. Um, and she put, she put it in, but she's put it in like in between my knuckles, which I can't remember if I've ever had one there before, but yeah it was sore um but i was just sitting lying there like breathing um and she was having to like move it around and every time she moved it around it was really quite painful um and this by this point i was just starting to feel a little bit funny um and she sort of said to me are you okay and i just said oh i said i'm just feeling a little bit dizzy but i was like just just carry on i'll be fine i'm just gonna lie here and and breathe um but after a little while she was like she just said oh i'm just bruising you and nothing's coming out i'm gonna have to take it out and i'm lying there like oh god <laughs> i was like that's the third time um so she said oh um the right she said we can try once more in your hand and if we can't get it then then you'll have to book another appointment and come back and try again another day 
and I'm sitting there like no I really do not want to have to do that because it's horrible having to go away and come back again um, so I said well do you want to try my other arm instead um, so she said well let me look at your other hand so she had a look at this hand and um, she said okay we'll give that a try and this time she actually tried like where I would normally expect them to do it and thankfully she got it on the fourth attempt um, so yeah I am I am so glad because I was like, I, I just thought I don't want to have, like lay here for I don't know how long being poked for like three or four times and not come away having actually had a blood test. So yeah, thankfully we got there. Um, but she was really nice. It's just my veins are just rubbish. Um, so yeah, I was feeling a little bit funny after that and it had obviously taken a lot longer than we planned. Um, and then well it, well since i woke up i've been having problems with my gastro issues um and when i came home they still weren't very good so i have just been like in and out of the loo feeling rubbish and sick and in pain and my good start to the week has just kind of gone out the window a bit but never mind um it is what it is um so yeah this week is feeling kind of busy I mean in the grand scheme of things it's not that busy but it feels quite busy compared to like how things have been up until now so today I had the blood test I haven't got any other plans for today tomorrow um, I think tomorrow I'm gonna go and visit my grandma um, my dad's booked a pod visit which is where we can sit like one side of a glass screen and my grandma will be the other side um, so basically because she's in a care home she's allowed to have two face-to-face -face visitors now um which is usually like my dad and one of his siblings they kind of they swap depending on the week and who's around and stuff um and for them they have to have a covid test when they get there and then wait until the result comes back and then they can actually go in and see her face to face um but she's also allowed to have pod visits and she can have i think it's two people per pod visit and she can have one pod visit a week um Apparently children don't count in those numbers, so we would like to try and get Noah over there at some point, but it will have to be in the holidays because it's um, on a Tuesday morning and he's usually at preschool. Um, so yeah, I think my dad and I are going to go over tomorrow morning to see her, which will be so lovely because I haven't seen her in over a year now. Um, you know, we've spoken on FaceTime a little bit, but she finds that quite difficult because she's so deaf she can't hear us. Um, so yeah, it will be really good to see her. So I'm going to go and do that tomorrow morning. Um, I think we've also got Noah tomorrow as well. Wednesday we've got Noah. Um, and actually I don't have anything else on on Wednesday, so that's quite nice. And then Thursday um, I have got to go up to London. My dad's going to come with me and I am going to get my leg x-rayed and then I'm seeing my leg surgeon. Um, I'm really, really hoping that it will actually be my surgeon um because obviously like you don't necessarily see the consultant sometimes you see like a registrar or something like that um but it would just be really good to actually see my surgeon because i haven't seen him for quite a while and i'd like to hear his thoughts like now so yeah i'm a bit nervous about that um going up to london because i haven't done that for quite a while friday i've got a uh, virtual council meeting in the morning it's also my grandma's birthday but I, I just don't know what we're going to be able to do because um they you can only have like set visiting in the care homes so we would look we yeah we would have already seen her on the tuesday and um i don't think they usually do visiting on a friday because i think they have like a deep clean or something um so i'm not quite sure what we're doing for her birthday um it's going to be a bit difficult to do anything nice to celebrate um and then I don't think I've got, I haven't got anything on at the weekend. So it's not like massively busy, but I've got a few things going on, which just feel a little bit overwhelming after kind of having such a quiet year. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to light a new candle today. I've gone for this one. I haven't actually got that many left to choose from now, but I've gone for this one, which is aloe water. I can't really smell it, so I don't really know what it smells like. Um, but we'll see what that's like when we light it and yeah I need to get a video up and then I need to start doing some more editing and I'm also starting to get 
videos together for um, some awareness videos for EDS Awareness Month. So I've got various little things that I need to get done and I'm just going to work through them until lunchtime. <laughs> So this morning my dad and I have come to visit my grandma, um, it's the first time that I'll have seen her in over a year so I'm really looking forward to seeing her. We're doing a pod visit at her care home um, which basically means we're going to be like behind the glass so we won't be able to kind of give her a hug or anything like that but we'll still be able to talk to her hopefully, I'm hoping she'll be able to hear us. Um, so yeah, that's just getting my chair out for me and then we're going to head in and have a little bit, bit of time with her. From visiting my grandma it was really really lovely to see her for the first time in over a year um, felt a bit emotional actually um, it was it was weird um, having to be behind glass and not being able to go over and just give her a hug or you know sit next to her and hold her hand um, I don't know I just felt a bit sad kind of seeing her sitting on her own like on the other side of the glass um, but it was just nice to be able to to see her face to face. Um, she coped okay with the like hearing side of things. She's quite deaf, um, and they have like a little microphone and sort of speaker each side of the glass. Um, and my dad is able to turn her hearing aid up from his phone, so he managed to turn her hearing aid up enough so that she could hear us um, if we spoke kind of near the microphone. So that worked okay. I was quite happy that we could actually communicate. Um, and we got about half an hour with her and just sat and chatted. It's her birthday on Friday and she was saying how excited she is for it. Um, so I'm hoping we can do something to make it special. Um, and yeah, she was just asking, asking about the family and how my sister is with the baby and everything like that. Um, and yeah, just, just chatting about normal kind of stuff. Um, and she kept saying how she was looking forward to when, you know, we didn't have to sit behind glass to see each other and how we, you know, when we could see each other properly and then, you know, saying how she was looking forward to being able to ask us over for a meal and things like that. And I just, I just hope that those things can be done sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really good that they have got this pod thing in place because, if they hadn't, I wouldn't be able to see her. Hopefully when it gets a little bit warmer, we'll actually be able to see her outside, which will be nice because then we won't have to have the like glass or anything between us. Um, but for now, it was nice to just see her and to get to spend a bit of time with her. So yeah, I'm happy that I've been able to do that. Just having a little rest now on the chair. I've got Freddie sat down by my legs and I think Becca has just gone out to get us a McDonald's for lunch, so that would be a nice treat. Um, so I'm just going to have a bit of a rest here until she gets back. Good evening. It's a while later since I last spoke to you. Um, not done a huge amount today. Had a bit of a sleep after lunch. Um, completely missed Noah. He didn't stay for dinner. Um, and he didn't get back to preschool until a little bit later because they went for a little walk. Um, and then I went straight out in the garden and I was asleep, so yeah, missed him. Um, but I've had a shower, got my hair washed and everything. Um, I'm just going to have some dinner, but I thought I'd just show you um, a couple of things that have arrived in the post. One is a birthday present for Lisa because it's her birthday tomorrow. And the other one is a birthday present for my grandma. So uh, the birthday present for Lisa is stuff that was on her Amazon wish list. Um, so the first thing is these gr Greensler, never heard of them, uh, wash, oh hang on, that's the wash pads before you, so reusable like cotton pads, uh, organic bamboo cotton, look like this, which I will link below, um, for taking your makeup off and all that kind of stuff, so we've got those, and I've also from me, a few things in here. Uh, got her the Magic Mic XXL DVD because that was on her list as well. 
I haven't actually seen Magic Mike. Um, is that really bad? I should probably watch it sometime. Um, and then my mum and dad have got her the Hobbit trilogy on Blu-ray because that was on her list as well. Again, I have not seen The Hobbit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what they've got her. Uh, I've also got some giant lolly sticks because I watched um, a reel from Chronically Jenny. She does like quite a lot of like hacks for spoonies and things like that. And um, she did one recently for menu planning where basically she had written like lots of different like meal ideas on lolly sticks and put them in a, a glass jar. Um, and then at the beginning of each week, they just pick like seven out for the meals of that week rather than trying to like come up with ideas every week, which can sometimes be quite difficult. Um, she's just written a load on there. And then on the back, she also writes like some of the ingredients you need for them. So I thought we'd give it a go because it sounded quite a good idea. So I picked up some lolly sticks from Amazon as well. And then for my grandma, I got a photo book made on Snapfish, I think. Yeah, Snapfish. Um, of just like loads of family photos. So that's the front. Um, I won't show you the whole inside because it's got loads of extended family photos in it. But the last page has got the pets on it which I thought she'd like. She particularly likes Alfie so I had to have one of Alfie in there. Um, and yeah I think that book was like it was under £20 because there was a discount code or something and it's got 50 something photos in it. So hopefully she'll enjoy looking through that. It's quite difficult to know what to get someone who's going to be 95 because there's not a huge amount that she needs. I think we're going to get her some um, like plants to go outside. She's got like a little patio area um, outside her bedroom. So I think we're gonna get some plants to go around there as well, but she likes looking at family photos. So I thought she'd like that. So yeah, we're gonna get these wrapped, have a bit of dinner, and then probably have a cup of tea and watch some YouTube. Good morning. I have woken up with a headache this morning. I had a bit of a headache yesterday and it seems to have just got a bit worse today, which is, great <laughs> um so yeah i'm just taking things slowly ish um we had noah for a bit this morning um didn't have him for very long actually because my brother isn't working today and it's my sister-in-law's birthday um but she had to go for a hospital appointment so she wasn't in work this morning which meant that they could actually well i say they could have breakfast this uh, together that she couldn't because she had to be nil by mouth, but um, yeah, they could spend some time together. So my nephew actually had breakfast at home and then they dropped him off before they had to go to the hospital for my sister-in-law. So we just had a little bit of time um, to play with him. Um, and we went out into the garden, I went out in my pajamas and just sat there and watched him play. Um, and it was quite nice, a little bit chilly still, but the sun was out and he was enjoying, he got his like little tools out and he was digging in the flower bed and yeah, he was he was having fun so that was good. Um, and then he's gone off to preschool now um, and my brother's gonna pick him up from preschool so we won't have him um, this afternoon. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit, a bit more quiet than we'd expected but we have got him tomorrow now um, because my brother's having to work so um, I'll get to see him, well, at some point tomorrow, I don't know, because I've got, I've, I'm going up to London tomorrow for my hospital appointment, which is at, I think I've got an x-ray at quarter to three, and then my appointment's at quarter past three, so I don't know whether Noah will still be here when we get home. Um, so yeah, I haven't really seen much of him this week, but um, it was nice to spend a little bit of time with him this morning. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much as exciting as today is going. I feel like I look like I've been in a fight. This is from one of my blood test attempts. The other one's not too bad, you can just see it there. And then the ones on my arm are okay, but that one, I, I knew it was gonna bruise as soon as I, when she was like putting it in and stuff and she said it was gonna bruise as well. So there we go. Um, but yeah, not, not really much to report today, to be honest, um, I'm just, trying to take it slowly today because of going up to London tomorrow. I want to make sure I've got enough energy to do that. Um, 
feeling a little bit nervous about it. Um, I think one, like I'm nervous about just going up to London and, you know, being in a busy place and seeing lots of people and, you know, I've kind of, I've been in the house for so long and tried to avoid that kind of, those kind of busy situations. So it's just going to be a bit strange kind of doing that because it's been a while. Um, I have done it since the pandemic, but it's been quite a while. Um, and also I'm just nervous about my appointment. Um, just seeing my surgeon and seeing what his thoughts are with my leg and, um, yeah, just, just a bit nervous about the whole thing, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm getting on with doing some more editing of another weekly vlog. Um, I need to go through my Instagram uh, DMs and stuff at some point because I put out a message asking for if anyone was interested in being part of a video for Ella Stanlos Syndrome Awareness Week, month, whatever it's called. <laughs> um, so I need to go through my messages and try and reply to some and... Um, yeah get the ball rolling with that so i think i might do that this afternoon once i'm on the sofa and a bit more comfy um so that i can actually just get some editing done this morning and that is about as exciting as my wednesday's getting um so i'm gonna get on with this and i'll talk to you a little bit later good morning sorry that i didn't film much yesterday i wasn't feeling brilliant to be honest um once i'd done a bit of editing in the morning and had my lunch i pretty much slept well most of the afternoon and into the evening so there just wasn't much to film um today we're heading up to london to see my leg surgeon and to have an x-ray um so yeah we've just got to the station getting my chair out i'm feeling nervous just about getting up there and also about what he might say and what the appointment will hold um it feels like it's that weather where i just don't quite know what to wear so i've put my big like coat on um but I'm a little bit too warm in it, but then when you're out in the shade and stuff, it's a bit chilly, so yeah, I'm gonna be taking my coat on and off, I think. Um, I think I need to just get a lighter weight coat to wear, at, like when it's this sort of weather. Um, but anyway, it is what it is today. So yeah, just gonna get my chair out, get our tickets, and then head up to London. First day of spring and I just want to sing To everything that's moving Every single little thing To them birds flying free Fish in the sea Flowers and trees Every little bumblebee I want to sing The kids playing hoops Going loop de loop Their rainbow colored bouncy balls And their ice cream scoops Got my shoes in my hand And my feet in the sand I got 20 ducklings in a row Like a little marching band And they sing I'm back from London. Sorry that I didn't speak to you while I was up there. Um, there's just not really any suitable times um, because we were just either on public transport or in the hospital. Um, and yeah, just wasn't really a good, good time to talk. But um, yeah, no, it was, it went okay. Um, transport and everything was, was okay. It was... I'd say it's, it's still quiet. I don't think it's as quiet as it was last time I went up. I can't actually remember when it was that I last went up to London, but um, it was, I don't know, maybe six months ago or something. So it was a little, I would say it was a bit busier, but definitely not as busy as like I'm used to with London. Um, I mean, we came home in the rush hour and there was like, not really that many people on the train or in the station it was it was kind of strange um but actually i was quite grateful for it because i just was anxious about 
it being busy and crowded and stuff. Um, but yeah, got to the hospital and I went for an x-ray first. Um, they were running a bit late, so um, I ended up being late for my other appointment, but actually they were okay because they kind of know, basically the the consultant like send, asks you to go for the x-ray first, so they know that it kind of, you know, depends on how the x-ray department's running as to when you get your appointment and stuff. Um, but yeah, I had the x-ray done, um, and then I went up to my appointment. Um, I didn't see the actual surgeon that did my surgery, but I saw um, one of the doctors that I had spoken to on the phone, I think last time I had a phone appointment, I spoke to him on the phone. Um, so it was quite good to actually like put a face to a voice. Um, and yeah, he asked how things were going and um, yeah, kind of where where I was at since I'd last spoken to him and I said that I'd um, I'd done the physio and not got massively far. Um, <clears throat> I said that we had kind of worked on me putting more weight on my foot um, through my leg, but with regards to the bending, we just didn't really get anywhere. Um, and also I said about how I'm waiting for the lidocaine infusions with the pain clinic. Um, and then he examined me again and um, he said, yeah, like the bending has just not really progressed at all. Um, he said that, um, he sort of sat there and looked and he was like, he, he just said, oh, he said, I've never seen this complication before, um, like from this type of operation. Um, and I was like, great. <laughs> um, but then my surgeon had said that as well. And I was like, okay, that's, that's, that's not really what I want to be hearing, um, which I don't know. I mean, to me, it seems a bit strange. Like I, I can't be the only person who has had this problem. Um, but I think when you've got EDS, you can heal differently and, and different things can happen. So, I mean, before I even had the surgery, we said that the EDS would just be an added complication. So, we knew that things might be more complicated and they have been. Um, but yeah, basically, I haven't actually explained this, but um, if you haven't been watching for long, um, I was. this is the surgeon that did my um, femoral osteotomy, which is where they broke my thigh bone and twisted it and reset it with a rod and screws. And it's caused um, problems with my knee. Um, so yeah, he said he hadn't seen anything like this before um, and that he wanted to have a chat to my surgeon tomorrow um, to see what his thoughts were and he thought that they would probably take my case back to their multidisciplinary team meeting so that they could um, have a chat with the knee surgeon as well um, and kind of say what we've tried and where we're at now. Um, he said that he thought it was good that I was going to be having the lidocaine infusions um, because he said either they will help um, and the pain, the problem with my knee bending could possibly be that um, because of pain, like my muscles are just like spasming and stopping my knee from bending. So he said if the lidocaine infusion if the lidocaine infusions work then that's probably what the issue is but he said if the lidocaine infusions don't work and don't really do anything um then that kind of rules out it probably being that problem and he said it could be that the like soft tissue um and stuff around my knee has um oh, what's the word like trying to think what the word is my brain's gone I texted it to my mum <laughs> let me see what it's what I said because I, I said it in the text to her uh let me see oh yeah <laughs> so he said that he he said it that it could be that the like soft tissue and everything around my knee has like stiffened up and kind of fused together a bit um and so that's basically like set my knee where it is and is making it hard to bend um because I said to him that it's like it's kind of like you know I 
I tell my knee and my brain that I need it to bend, but I can't get it to do it. Um, and it's like there's kind of a disconnection. And he said that it, it can't be just that, because if it was just that, if he like lifted my leg up or something, my knee would just bend and that's it's not doing that it's it's kind of like held tight um so he said yeah it could be that it's kind of all just sort of fused how it is and that's why it's not bending so he said that they are, something they might possibly be able to do is put me under a general general heh, general anesthetic and then do um some like mobilization while I'm under anesthetic um basically because I wouldn't be able to feel the pain of it so they would be able to try and sort of bend it to try and like stretch and break up that kind of stiffened and fused together soft tissue um a lot better than obviously if I was awake um in the hope that they could kind of get it mobilizing enough to then I suppose have a plan afterwards to keep doing that um the only thing is he says that on my x-rays it's still showing that my knee don't know about my ankle because they didn't actually x-ray down that far this time um but my knee he said is very osteopenic which basically means that it's um the bone has thinned quite a lot probably because i haven't been putting weight on it we're not sure if it's kind of like cause or effect um but he said if they did that mobilisation thing, they would just have to be very careful about how they did it because they obviously don't want to cause a fracture to my knee, which they said he said could happen um, just because it's so fragile. So, um, oops, sorry, I need to take my medication. Um, so that's why I think they needed to have a chat with the knee, but the knee surgeon as well, and just get his opinion and decide what what they want to do. Um, but yeah, he said that that was possibly an option as well. So we've got a couple of options that we're kind of going to give a try or, or that we've kind of got to use. So we've got the lidocaine infusions, which I'm, which I'm on the waiting list for. And then he's going to have a chat about the other option and whether there's anything else that they could possibly do. Um, and I think he's going to make me a phone appointment for four to six weeks so that he can then feed back from that multidisciplinary team meeting about what their thoughts are and what the plan is from here. I think that was it. Did I write anything else to my mum? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so that was it. Um, so I, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't really know what to expect because, yeah, <laughs> I don't. I just feel like I felt like we'd kind of we're getting to like hit a wall um so you know i'm glad that they're taking it back to like the rest of the team and to the knee people to see if they've got any thoughts and we'll just go from there and see how we get on and now i'm just going to crash out on the sofa possibly fall asleep for a bit um i'm absolutely shattered <laughs> um but yeah no it was it was a productive appointment i think um just hopefully I'll get something like useful back from the MDT meeting and see see what happens from there. So yeah, I am going to chill out for a bit now and I'll probably speak to you tomorrow. Good morning. I have just had a virtual council meeting. Um it didn't go on too long, so that was quite nice. Um and I think now I'm going to have a bit of a sleep. I wouldn't normally sleep in the morning and I feel kind of guilty for doing it. Um, but I'm just shattered after yesterday and I'm struggling to stay awake. Um, so I thought if I have a little bit of a sleep now that it might just kind of help wake me up a little bit and get me through the rest of the day. Um, I think my auntie is coming um, for lunch in the garden a bit later. Um basically it's my grandma's birthday today she's got a visit with her this morning and then um her my mum and my dad are having afternoon tea back with my grandma this afternoon um i think out in the garden not sure um but yeah so i think she's yeah she'll be over at lunchtime and so i want to have some lunch while she's here um so that i can say hello to her because it's been a while um 
so yeah I think I'm just gonna kind of switch things around a little bit have a bit of a sleep now and then after lunch I'll go upstairs and try and get some editing done um, I've got plenty of other stuff I could be doing now but I just can't seem to concentrate or keep my eyes open so I think having a bit of a rest now will hopefully <laughs> fingers crossed just help give me a little bit of a boost I seem to be having one of those days today where I just feel like I'm gonna burst into tears um, at any moment which is not ideal um, don't really know why um, I mean I haven't been feeling great all week so I don't know if it's just because I feel a bit more like wobbly after my appointment and stuff yesterday I think it doesn't help sort of feeling more tired and not particularly well physically um, you know it just makes it harder I think if you're trying to deal with like mental health stuff as well when you've just not got the energy to sort of challenge not challenge thoughts because I, I struggle to do that to be honest but to you know distract yourself and that kind of stuff I think it just makes it harder and it makes you feel worse um but yeah I think I mean as I said I've kind of not felt brilliant all week and I do wonder whether it's something to do with lockdown easing a bit which sounds a bit weird because like everyone well a lot of people that I know are really excited about lockdown easing and you know people's moods have kind of picked up a bit um and I just feel like I'm kind of the opposite not the opposite that's not like because in some ways I'm I am sort of glad about it happening and glad that I can sort of see family a little bit more and things like that um but I don't know I think it's a it's a complicated thing I think when you're chronically ill or disabled and you perhaps can't get out as much you know as you would like and and things like that when we were um sorry I'm just I'm just importing some footage and a little message came up I wasn't sure what it was um no like you know <laughs> when we were kind of locked down completely there wasn't that kind of like feeling of seeing the rest of the world kind of carrying on around you and you know watching people doing all the stuff that you wish you could be doing so in a way it was kind of easier because everybody pretty much you know was at home and you know yes people could still do things that perhaps I couldn't do but it just wasn't so like in your face I guess whereas like as things are sort of easing I guess that's just coming back a bit again and you're, you're just more aware of the difference again and I don't know I'm just sort of getting that like feeling of being left behind a bit again and I don't know I don't know I'm sure other people feel the same and, and I have spoken to other people who can kind of who feel that as well and it's it's just a lot to get your head around I think and you know adjust to and sometimes it just it just feels rubbish um but yeah, just just trying not to cry today. I just <laughs> I don't know. It's, I I just feel like I want to like curl up in a ball on the sofa. Oh, this is making me go now, and just cry. <laughs> and I don't really know why. Like, there's nothing like not one thing that I can put my finger on. I just just feel a bit crap. I think I feel a bit a bit wobbly I think after yesterday like it's not even like it was a bad appointment you know we've got some things that we're hopefully gonna maybe give a try and they're gonna talk about it in their like multidisciplinary multidisciplinary team meeting and stuff um I don't know I think I'm just some days I just I just feel tired of life <laughs> which just sounds like I know it sounds a bit, um, I can't think what the right word is, overdramatic, um, but I don't know, I think sometimes it just gets too much doesn't it and you just want to get off for the world to stop and for you to just get off and oh. <laughs> 
I don't know. Like, I, th I think because sometimes I do just feel like I want to give up. Like, I just I feel like I can't do this anymore. But I don't really want to say that because, you know, it sounds very sort of final and that's not, that's not what I mean. Um, I think it's, ju it's just that, like, exhaustion and, yeah, just the... I don't know, I don't think I'm making much sense. Um, just, just, I just have having enough, have, have, yeah, just having had enough of just life as it is and, I don't know, feeling lonely and, yeah. I don't know, it's frustrating because sometimes you, you don't know, like, what, what you want or what you need like sometimes I'm just like sometimes I feel like oh, I just want someone to give me a, like a big hug or to like sit on the sofa and cuddle up being able to like cuddle up with somebody and feel sort of you know comforted and like cared for and that's not to say that I don't get that feeling from you know my family because I feel really lucky to have my family around me but I guess it's it's not the same as like having a partner who you know you're in like that kind of relation like a relate proper relationship with and stuff like it's it's very different and sometimes I think I just really kind of crave that kind of really like close having a close relationship and you know having that person at the, who at the end of the day you can just curl up on the sofa with and if I want to cry just cuddle up and cry and yeah I don't know sometimes it's just harder than others I think and I think that at the moment is one of those times um and yeah I, I realise that that whole this whole <laughs> clip has just been a bit of a mismatched bundle of words and feelings and thoughts but I think that just that just demonstrates how I feel and what my head feels like at the moment it all just feels a bit messy and all over the place and overwhelming and I can't quite see the way through it or make sense of it all and yeah I thought I'd just try and get some words out on here because I'm sure other people get these thoughts and feelings and just feel completely overwhelmed by them sometimes and for me anyway it helps to know that I'm not the only one that feels like that so yeah I hope my ramblings are, <laughs> are kind of helpful um anyway I'm just importing some footage so that I can get a little bit of editing done um I mean just physically I'm not feeling great today um I slept this morning after my meeting and then we had lunch in the garden with my aunt and uncle so that was nice um and then my mum and dad and my aunt and uncle went to my grandma's care home and they had an afternoon tea um, and they sent some pictures and it looked amazing like the care home had done like a proper like afternoon tea you know like on the tea stands and they'd got they'd made like a really nice cake for her and like it's it's really nice to know that she's had a special birthday because last year her birthday was in lockdown she couldn't really do anything she couldn't see anybody apart from my dad who went over to look after her um so i'm really grateful that she's at the care home because if she'd been at her house we just wouldn't have been able to do anything like that for her so i'm glad that she's had had that today and has been made to feel special bless her like apparently the um residents were all sort of dressed up for St George's Day you know they had like hats and balloons and stuff and she thought it was all for her birthday so you know we didn't we didn't argue and tell her that it was for St George's Day I mean to be fair the care home did they did like balloons for grandma and um as I said they've done all of the afternoon tea for her and everything so you know they have done a lot for her birthday and it's been lovely so I'm glad that, glad that she's able to do something even if I couldn't be there um yeah I think that's upset me a bit as well but at least I got to see her earlier in the week so that was nice anyway 
I'm going to get on with doing this editing and I'll possibly talk to you later. I'll see how I'm feeling. Good morning. I'm feeling a little bit better today. <laughs> I don't really sound too sure about that. Um, I don't know. Still a bit wobbly and stuff, but I'm just, just taking it a step at a time and plodding on through like I normally do. Um, so yeah, last night was very quiet. I just, after I'd done my editing, I just went and curled up on the sofa under a blanket, put the telly on and just tried to look after myself, had a cup of tea and yeah, just, I don't know, that's just what I felt I needed. I think sometimes you just need to feel like comforted and for me you know putting a nice cozy blanket around me and having a nice warm cup of tea and putting something on the telly that I kind of feel you know comforted by because it's something that I watch a lot so for me I was watching the soaps um it just sometimes helps me to feel a little bit I don't know a little bit safer I think um and yeah we're now at Saturday and it's a lovely day again today, nice and sunny. Um, still like, I don't know, a lot of people are saying it's warm, I'm not that warm but um, it's nice and sunny so, you know, that's that's ha I'm happy with that. Um, oh, I checked my blood test results uh, yesterday, um, I had those done on Monday and I think they're all back I can't remember how many that they did so I don't really know um but it says that my phosphate is low again I continuously have trouble with my phosphate levels I don't know why my GP doesn't really know why we don't know whether it's just an absorption thing and I'm just not absorbing the phosphate properly um but it's been going on for years and <sighs> yeah we've never really never really found out why um so on that one it just said repeat tests so i'm assuming that she'll want me to just have another blood test i don't know how in how long to see how it's doing um i've got an appointment phone appointment with her on monday so i can talk about these things with her then and see what she thinks um my white my white cell count is like it's normal but it's like right at the bottom of normal um which is probably okay and there's probably like a, lot, a few of these there's probably not much to do about them apart from just watch them and see if anything else happens um however my neutrophils are quite low um this is something else that i have problems with a lot um having low neutrophil levels which are um basically to do with like your immune system and um when they're low it basically means that you're more at risk of like catching stuff um Again, don't know why they're always so low. Um, and I don't really know if there's anything we need to do about it. So I'll ask her and see what she says. Um, my ferritin levels, um, are they're like in the normal range at the moment, but you, if you sort of look back um, at like the last few times we've had it tested, they are like con consistently going down again so a few years ago um we did some blood tests just because i wasn't feeling brilliant and found that my ferritin levels had gone down to i think it was about five or something um which is pretty low <laughs> um and so i was put on um ferrous fumarate iron tablets and gradually um they started going back up again it took quite a long time to kind of get them to a level of like where my GP was happy with them because although um, I think the like range is quite large but she said actually if it's at the lower end of that range it's still not ideal and it could still make you feel quite tired so we needed to get it kind of up into like the mid range um, and then we got to a point where actually it was getting they were getting too high um, so I stopped taking the iron tablets and I haven't taken them for, I don't know, a couple of years now. And yeah, we have just been aware that my ferritin levels do just seem to be kind of creeping down again um, in kind of quite big increments. Um, so although that it's not kind of anything particular, I don't think to worry about at the moment. Um, I think it's just something we'll probably have to keep an eye on and just make sure that they don't go down 
as low as they did before um but yeah i mean there was nothing like major in my blood results which we'd kind of expected um and i can't imagine that any of these things would be making me feel particularly like worse you know they're not they're not like um out of range enough for it to be anything like i don't think to particularly worry about um but yeah i'll talk to my gp about that on monday and just see what she says um and yeah today's just another fairly quiet day which i think i need at the moment i'm just trying to recover from london i think and yeah it's gonna take a little while um i'm just getting on with finishing editing a weekly vlog and I probably won't get it going up today but if I can get it finished and exporting I'll be quite happy with that um, and yeah that's probably about it I mean I'm hoping to get my hair washed later it's about the highlight of my day which is always exciting um, but apart from that just just resting and kind of recovering a little bit I think uh, so yeah that's my plan for the day so I thought I'd just come out here and show you this um, greenhousey thing. I don't know what you call it, because um, I don't think I've shown you it since my dad actually put it together. It's pretty big, <laughs> um, but it's just by the doors where I can come out where my little step is. So it's quite easy to access. And then my dad today has been planting um, some, I think they're called seed plugs or something. It's where they're already sort of starting to grow a little bit. So we've got some geraniums, uh, some lobelia, and some impatience beacon. Oh, busy lizzies. Um, so yeah, we've got all those so far. Plenty of space for me to grow some seeds as well. Um, I think maybe tomorrow I'm going to get my seed box out and see what I've got. So we would also like to grow some vegetables as well. I said I'd really like to grow some potatoes, although we're not sure if we're a bit late or early <laughs> for growing them. But I'm going to have a little look and see. Um, and I might speak to one of my friends because she's been growing a lot of like veg and stuff and ask what kind of stuff she would recommend. Um, but yeah, I need to see what seeds I've got as well because I know I've got quite a few different like flower seeds that I'd like to grow. We've also got Noah's little watermelon pips down here um, that aren't really doing much yet, but then they've only just been planted. So we'll see what happens to them. But yeah, I just thought I'd show you because I'm excited about growing stuff and uh, hopefully over the summer I'll be able to show you stuff as it kind of blooms and grows into exciting things. Freddie's standing there, probably wanting to come out and shout at the dogs over the fence, but he's going to sit in there for now. Sunday bits although I didn't watch virtual church this week that kind of fell by the wayside this week a bit but um yeah I've sorted my medication out um we've had some lunch and I've watched the Simpsons for a bit um and I'm now having a look in my seed box which I bought I can't remember how many years ago I bought this but it's basically um a big like metal box and then inside it's got dividers um, and you can basically put your seeds like in the right dividers so that you know when they need to be planted. Um, <laughs> I haven't looked in here for quite a while and quite a few of the seeds are out of date but I think we're still going to give them a go and just see what happens. Um, I just need to decide what to grow. So I've got these little syrinth seeds which I got for Christmas from a friend um i mean it says it said to scatter in a dryish area now which would have been christmas for flowers in early spring but i think i'm just going to pop them in um the 
greenhouse thing and hopefully they will still flower. I did Google like how, because our soil here is rubbish. Um, so scattering them on the um, flower beds would just not have been very good. Um, and I did Google like the best way to grow them and stuff, but I couldn't find a lot out. So um, we may just wing it and see what happens with them. Um, <laughs> also found some, um, what are they? Growing beans with a message. So they've got like these little bean pods and each of them have got a message on and then apparently it comes up like this. I actually cannot remember where I got these from, but I don't know whether to do these with Noah. He might enjoy doing those. Um, and they are like, they're wholesome messages, so he would be okay with <laughs> with doing them. Um, we've also got some matchstick flowers, which are sweet alyssum, where, oh, I think I've tried pr planting these before and nothing happened, so maybe we'll give it another go. But basically you put the little like matchsticky thing in some soil and then just water it and apparently it grows. It didn't work last time, but perhaps we'll we'll try again. We won't be defeated. Um, we've got some Nigella sativa, love in the mist. I don't know where this comes, came from, but it's got my dad's writing on it. So he obviously sorted that one out. Um, and then for actually planting around about this time, we've got some dahlias which are Bishop's children. It says, actually we could sow the dahlias, mum, because it says sow outdoors May to June, sow indoors February to April. So we could do the dahlias. Um, and then we've got quite a few in here. Oh, we've got some uh, little forget-me-not seeds, which I was sent by the vet when um, we had to put, get Jaffa put down and I haven't actually planted them yet and I keep meaning to do it so I'd quite like to do those. I'm just really hoping that they'll still be okay. They're tiny seeds. Um, we've got some peas. So I might give those a try because I'd quite like to grow some vegetables. Um, and then we've got some dwarf sunflowers. We've also got um, a little pot from Waitrose like we got last year, um, which I think we're gonna do with Noah because we've also got some cherry tomatoes and some strawberries. Um, I've also got a tobacco plant and some fox gloves. We've got a lot here. I don't know whether we're gonna plant everything. Um, and then we've got some poppies and some cosmos. Um, I've also got some poppy slash wildflower meadow mix. Um, I don't know whether these grow well in pots or whether you're meant to just scatter them on soil, but as I said, our soil is pretty, pretty terrible. Um, got some other fox gloves. Got some honesty, which we've grown before. That came out quite well, actually. We had some nice, really pretty little white flowers on it. Um, so I might try that again. I've also got quite a few sunflowers, so that's going to be something to do with Noah and hopefully Maisie as well, if we can do that. Uh, we've got some plant on it. I don't know why that's in there. <laughs> and then we've got some iris bulbs, but they're not to be sown until... September, I think. Um, we looked at doing potatoes, but we reckon we're gonna have to wait until later in the year to do those. Um, and then we've also got some sweet peas, two lots of different sweet peas. Um, and they, they're they meant to be sown between October and February. So I think we're a bit late for them. And then we've got some other cosmos as well, which is March. We could probably do the cosmos. I don't know why that's in October. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna have a little look through here and choose a few to plant. And then I might go outside and, have we got some soil? Yeah, I think I've got some compost at the end of the garden. Yeah. Perhaps I'll ask him to bring it down before he goes out. Anyway, let's work out what we're going to plant first. 
Right, so I've just been having a bit of rest um, and watching Call the Midwife and we had a FaceTime call from David and Emma and Maisie so that was quite nice and now my mum and I have come out to plant some seeds. Um, so we've decided to go for the Sorinth seeds, we're going to do the forget-me-nots and we're going to plant some Cosmos Sensation Picrity whatever they are um yeah we're gonna just do three for now um there's a few ones that i'd like to try and plant with noah like the sunflowers and some peas um and also we've got some tomatoes and strawberries which we're gonna do with him but we thought we'd just start with these ones today and then we'll kind of see space wise how we're doing this is a good a day as any to start the rebuilding of life the roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin Beginning to thaw So there we go, we have got five little pot things of the Sorinth seeds. The rest of these ones are the Cosmos and then we've done three with the Forget-Me-Nots. I'm hoping that they work. It just said to put them on top of the soil and then press them down. So that's what we've done. Um, and then these ones have definitely grown since yesterday, which is quite exciting. So they're looking pretty good. Still no watermelon plants of any description um, but yeah I think we're going to do some other ones with Noah possibly this week we'll see how things go um, but for now we shall wait and see what happens. Good evening it's obviously quite a lot later now than when I was last speaking to you um, we got the seeds planted and they're now snug in the little I don't really know what it's called is it a cold frame or a greenhouse whatever it is they're they're in there um, and yeah I'm just trying to work out a couple of other things we might be able to plant um, that we could like grow some actual food from so if you've got any suggestions let me know um, and yeah watched a bit more Call the Midwife had a bit of a sleep and I sorted out an agenda for a council meeting all very exciting stuff um, and now I've got a cup of tea I've got some lemon drizzle green tea um, which I'm sure I've tried before but I can't actually remember what it tastes like so we shall see and I'm going to watch a little bit of YouTube and then I'm going to go to bed I've got an early start tomorrow because I think my GP is ringing me at half past eight or something so yeah I need to be up early <laughs> which I'm not very good at um, so yeah so I'd just come on and finish the vlog. I hope you have enjoyed this week's vlog. If you have and you'd like to see more from me, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell. That means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you've been up to this week, how you're getting on, anything else you want to comment on. I'm replying to comments. I say this every week, but I'm replying to comments as quickly as I can. Um, I've got a bit of a backlog, so I'm trying to catch up but it just depends what my health is doing and how much energy I've got in any given week. But I am getting there and I really appreciate anybody that takes the time to leave a comment. I love reading through them and replying and having a chat. So yeah, do leave one if you've got a spare couple of minutes. Also come and follow me on social media. My links are in the description below, but I'll pop my Instagram and Twitter up here. Those are the two platforms that I'm mainly on. So again, do come over, say hello. I'm replying as quickly as I can. Um, but yeah, it'd be lovely to see you over there as well. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.